Disney World has gone through a lot of changes, so the insider tips are changing too. How can you guarantee the best seats on rides? Where are you going to meet ultra-rare characters? And what underground website will get you reservations at our favorite restaurants without going through the Disney website? We got the answers for these hot tips today, plus many more here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. When you start telling people that you're planning a trip to Disney World, you're gonna start getting a whole bunch of suggestions and advice and tips from every direction. But which tips are legit and which are gonna end up wasting a bunch of your time and money? Don't worry, you don't have to sift through all the advice. We've done the grunt work for you and have collected the best 50 tips for your best Disney World trip ever. These are gonna help you during the planning stages of your vacation and when you're in the thick of the parks needing to decide what to do next. Some of these are 101, some contain insider tricks that only the pros are gonna know. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to have this list handy to refer back to after we wrap up here today. So make sure you send us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash 50 best tips so we can send you a PDF of everything we talk about here straight to your inbox. Now let's kick things off with an important warning for first time guests and Disney pros alike. This is something that we've been noticing in the parks recently, and it's not something you would expect. So if you don't get an advanced dining reservation for a Disney restaurant, but decide the day of your visit that being able to sit down and eat a nice meal really does sound great, there's still hope for you to do just that, but you gotta act fast. The My Disney Experience app has a dining tip board that shows you which table service restaurants have walk-up wait lists open the day of your visit, meaning you still have the chance to grab a seat even without a reservation. But if you want to try this method out, you're going to have to join that walk-up wait list early on in the day. Now, this is a little bit different from the previous walk-up wait list tips we've given you because what we're seeing is that those walk-up wait lists sell out a lot earlier than we kind of expected them to. For example, when I was in Animal Kingdom, I wanted to eat at Nomad Lounge. I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll just do walk-up wait list around three o'clock, four o'clock. Turns out the walk-up wait list was kind of full by noon. So even though I did get a walk-up wait list spot, when I tried to get in before noon, it was a good hour and 45 minutes before I got the ping to come back. So those do fill up sooner than you think. And just because you go to the walk-up wait list doesn't mean you're going to get in right now. You're going to have to wait until there is a table. So if you're hungry right now, walk-up wait list might not do you any good. It might, but it might not. And if you wait until later, those walk-up wait lists are going to be full for the day. So the sooner you can check on the walk-up wait list list for a restaurant, the more likely you're going to be able to get a return time. All right, next tip is also a brand new one for us. Take that crucial extra step when booking a good neighbor hotel. Booking a good neighbor hotel for a cheaper price in Disney World sounds great. And the deal sounds even sweeter when you realize lots of good neighbor hotels still have the same hotel perks as the Disney owned resorts. Now, for those who don't know, a good neighbor hotel is a non Disney owned resort that is near Disney World that can often give you the same perks, including early theme park entry as the Disney owned resorts. But in order to access those perks, you're gonna to need to make sure Disney associates your Good Neighbor Hotel booking with your My Disney Experience account. In order to link your hotel to your My Disney Experience account, go to the Disney World website, click on the My Disney Experience tab, select the My Plans option from the drop-down menu, and log into your account. Towards the top of your plans page, you'll notice a horizontal line of options, one being for your resort hotel. Click on the resort hotel and then choose to link a reservation. You'll be asked to type in your last name and your hotel confirmation number. And then you're linked up and your good neighbor hotel will be all set alongside your Disney plans, which means you can go ahead and get in for early theme park hours. Now we have had varying experiences with good neighbor hotels. Sometimes they let us right into early theme park hours, even if things aren't linked up and sometimes they do not. So it's always really good to make sure that that's linked up with your My Disney Experience account so you don't miss out on anything or have to waste any of those precious 30 minutes at guest services. All right, by now you probably know you can make Disney World dining reservations through the Disney World website and the My Disney Experience app. But if you're planning on going to the Disney Springs shopping district soon, you have another website option to turn to. You can also check out opentable.com. This is not an ad, this is just a tip that we use all the time and I know it can be helpful for a lot of you too. A few Disney Springs restaurants are actually available through Open Table, so you may just be able to score a seat at a place that otherwise looked full on the My Disney Experience app. 
Open Table often has last minute reservations for places like Morimoto Asia, The Boathouse, Haleo, or several other fan favorites. So check on the day of your visit or even before if it doesn't look like you can get in via the My Disney Experience app to see if you can get a reservation on Open Table. Just a quick reminder though that Open Table does not have a no show fee. But what it does have is if you no show enough times, they'll basically not let you book any more tables. So be sure to cancel your reservation if you aren't going to be able to use it. Now, some of Disney's best hotel perks can be misleading. For those staying at one of Disney's deluxe resorts, you'll have the extended evening hours benefit, and that allows you to stay at certain parks on certain days up to two hours after they close for everyone else. But here's the thing, not every ride will be available for you to ride, and even fewer shows and quick service locations will be available for you to visit. Imagine my absolute dismay when I showed up for extended evening hours in Magic Kingdom and just wanted to ride the People Mover 25 times in a row. And a cast member told me that I had to get off the ride because the People Mover was shutting down and wasn't open during extended evening hours. That's literally all I wanted to do. Someone play a small sad violin for me, please. Now, if you want to know which attractions are going to stay open during the extended evening hours, we have an updated list on our DFB website that I'll link in the description of this video. That way you can get a better idea of what to expect or maybe even what not to expect before your visit. Pay attention too to what food options are available because I have been in Epcot for extended evening hours and been starving and really only had fish and chips as an option. So heads up on that too. All right, there are four different Epcot festivals that happen during the year. Festival of the Arts, which of course we call farts because why wouldn't you if you could? Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, and Festival of the Holidays. It's exciting when one of your favorite fests or the fest you're most anticipating swings back into the scene, but you might want to avoid going on those opening festival days or the opening weekend. That's when the festival booths will be at their most crowded and food lines can get just as bad as ride lines depending on the booth. The end of the festivals can also prove to be hectic since out of town guests and locals alike are all trying to get those last minute festival bites and drinks before they disappear for a while, or in some cases for good. But heading to the festival during the mid season, especially in the middle of the week instead of on the weekends, is a sweet spot where crowds aren't as bad and you can order from multiple booths without having to worry about waiting forever in a day to check out. All right, you've chosen your lounge fly, your mini ears, your spirit jersey, your pins, and probably a ton of other stuff that you suddenly had to have because it had Mickey printed on the front of it. Now it is time to pay for your purchases and be on your way. Only here's the problem. The registers all have enormous checkout lines and you don't have time for that. That's where mobile merchandise checkout comes into play. With this mobile option, you can pay for all your items via the My Disney Experience app, just scroll down to the merchandise mobile checkout function, choose the shop you're currently in, and scan the barcodes of the items you want to add to your cart. Then when you're ready, you can pay for it all right there in the middle of the store, with no waiting in line necessary. Just make sure all your card info is linked to your My Disney Experience app ahead of time, and don't forget to show a cast member at the front of the shop your digital receipt before heading out. This mobile checkout feature isn't available at all the Disney stores, but you will find it at the most popular and newest Disney shops, so before you get in line, see if the shop you're standing in has that digital option before submitting to that tedious physical line. By the time you're deep within the World Showcase, your tongue might be crying out for water. Rule number one of a Disney trip, avoid dehydration at all costs. It will bite you in the butt for the rest of your trip if you let yourself get to that point. You can always request a free cup of water at quick service locations or refill your reusable water bottles at all of the water bottle refill stations. But there's another super sneaky way to get a hydration boost in Epcot and it's hiding out at Spice Road Table inside Morocco. Even if you're not planning on eating at Spice Road Table, go to the right side of the entrance to find a free water station with disposable Disney cups available for all guests to use. And this isn't Floridian swamp water, this is the good stuff. This may not be available every time you visit, but more often than not, you'll hit that free water jackpot. And by the way, Spice Road Table is a pretty decent restaurant and they have a bar right there. So never hurts also to go in and take a breather, relax for a little bit, have some small plates and appetizers, maybe a drink. I'm just saying, it sounds really good right now. <laughs> Okay, want to experience part of an Epcot exhibit without going on its main attraction? You probably can, just look for a back entrance. For example, if you want to visit the aquariums inside the Seas with Nemo pavilion, but you really don't want to ride the Seas with Nemo and friends, then just head to the left of the pavilion, find the gift shop and enter through that way instead. That way you can explore the aquariums at your leisure with no Nemo ride necessary. 
The same is true over at the Imagination Pavilion. If all your kid wants to do is check out those play areas located at the exit of Journey into Imagination with Figment, but they're super, super scared of that giant explosion at the end of the ride, this is of course not from personal experience when I was a child, then you can skip the Figment attraction and jump over to the play zone by entering in through Figment's gift shop. Remember, there's also a back entrance and exit to Epcot as a whole called the International Gateway. This is located between the United Kingdom and France pavilions and can connect you over to various Epcot area hotels and the Disney Skyliner, which can take you over to even more resorts in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now, I can remember on my first few trips to Disney World that I thought only hotel guests were allowed to go through that particular entrance and exit. Not true, y'all. It's open for everybody. So go ahead over there, explore the beach club, explore the boardwalk, jump on the Skyliner, go to the Riviera, go to Hollywood Studios. It's totally open and available to everybody. All right, between the My Disney Experience app and taking hundreds of pictures in front of Cinderella Castle, you'll likely be using your phone a lot on your Disney trip. So you might find your phone battery dying much more quickly than you expected. Disney does have portable fuel rod charger dispensers located in several areas across property. One fuel rod will cost you 30 bucks, but you'll be able to switch it out for a newly charged one for free at any fuel rod station when the one you're currently holding runs out of juice. But if you buy a fuel rod before your trip, you could wind up saving yourself a bunch of money. On Amazon, you can get a single fuel rod kit for 20 bucks, or you can pay 30 for not one, but two juiced up fuel rods. These fuel rods still work the same as the ones you buy directly from the parks, but they'll be better because they'll have saved you some of that hard-earned cha-ching before your trip. Two for one, not bad. And yes, you can exchange them in the parks for new fuel rods, so go ahead and make this choice. Sometimes Disney offers limited time park ticket discounts on their special offers, deals, and discounts page, but since these deals aren't available for guests all the time, how can you still save on your park tickets all year round? Well, by using a sneaky discount, that's how. When looking at multi-day tickets on the Disney website, you'll be asked to select a start date. Let's say we decide to buy a four-day park ticket. Here, I'll put a visual example on the screen now so we can walk through this. Notice that the start date isn't restricting us to just the date we selected. Instead, the calendar shows us that we can use each park ticket on non-consecutive days that range past the four days branching off from our starting point. Why is that important? Well, if you play around with the start date, you could stumble upon some extra secret savings. For example, let's say that the days you actually want to go to the parks fall on April 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. If you selected the 5th as your start date and pick a ticket that gives you access to one park per day, the total price starts at 566.15. But look at what happens when you choose April 2nd as your start date instead. The time you can use those tickets still encompasses your desired dates, the 5th to the 8th, but the price suddenly drops to $551.47. So you've just saved almost 15 bucks for doing absolutely nothing, really. You just clicked on a new date and whammo, the price changed. And who knows, you may be able to find even better savings during different times of the year by using this exact same method. The good news is Disney shows you what the ticket prices are going to look like every single day. So you can pick whatever start date on the calendar you want that'll wind up saving you the most money in the end and still letting you go to the parks on the dates you want to. Now, even with that $15 example, if you have four people in your family, you're saving 60 bucks. And if you're booking for a whole group of folks or if you're booking during a more popular time frame where the ticket prices are higher, you can potentially save hundreds. And whether you're looking for a sit-down meal, a quick bite to eat, or just something to satisfy your sweet tooth, Disney World's got hundreds of places for you to choose from, literally hundreds of restaurants. And though we do love ourselves a good selection of options, we know it can be tough to narrow down which restaurants and snack stands and fast food spots you're going to want to prioritize. That's why we wrote the 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, which you can find on dfbstore.com. This book is filled with reviews and pictures and details about every single restaurant on Disney World property. It is everything I know, everything that I have done in Disney World, everything I know about Disney World food and more, all packed into one really, really great digital download. We've also got special discount codes for DFB viewers. Yep, talking about you. Just type in code YouTube to save some money on your total guidebook purchase. And don't forget, this is a 100% money back guarantee. If it's not for you, if you don't like it, and if it's not useful for you, go ahead and let us know. We'll refund your money. Flying out of Orlando can be tricky enough as is with all the hustle, bustle, overall sadness that comes from being on the last leg of your Disney vacation, but MCO can make things a little bit easier for you. 
You can reserve a time slot to go through security at Orlando International Airport and bypass those potentially monstrous airport lines. The free MCO Reserve allows you to make an online reservation at reserve.clearme.com for an exclusive and much shorter security check lane, which stays open between 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. You can save your spot in MCO Reserve 72 hours prior to your flight, and this could potentially save you hours waiting in line. Drinks, food, upbeat atmospheres, and all at half the price? Yeah, sign us up. Several Disney Springs restaurants and bars have exclusive happy hours featured throughout the week. For example, the House of Blues restaurant and bar has $2 off all bottled and canned beer, $5 house wine and well liquors, and $6 margaritas and Long Island iced teas on Mondays through Thursdays from the time they open up until 5 p.m. On Mondays through Fridays from noon till 3 p.m., Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar has $6 to $7 wine and well drinks, $6 to $7 draft beers, and 8 and under appetizers. And over at Terralina Crafted Italian's Outdoor Bar, you can find daily $5 select beers and half-off glasses of wine between 4 and 6 p.m. And that's only a few of the happy hours you're going to find here. You can find even more on the Disney Springs website or by simply keeping your eyes peeled for pop-up happy hour signs throughout the district. You can also find all the different happy hour offerings as well as tons of other Disney Springs restaurants savings opportunities in that 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining we just talked about. Now, if watching the Disney shows is always your number one priority, then this next tip may lead to one of your best investments yet. Disney's dining packages allow guests to reserve a meal at one of the select park restaurants to be paired with guaranteed reserved seating for either a seasonal show, like you'll find over at the America Gardens Theater during the Epcot festivals, or a nighttime spectacular like Fantasmic at Disney's Hollywood Studios, or the fireworks in Magic Kingdom. Dining packages for the park spectaculars run year-round, while certain dining packages are only offered depending on what festival is currently happening at Epcot during your visit. We have all the details you'll need for each of these dining packages and how you can go about reserving them on the DFB website, which I'll go ahead and link down in the description below for you. All right, ever look at a ride's wait time and think, man, this is hopeless. That wait's never going to go down. I'm looking at you, Tower of Terror. The My Disney Experience app may be able to give you at least a glimmer of hope. If you go to the Rides and Attractions tip board on My Disney Experience app, you can find forecasted wait times for the rides. Select the ride you're interested in, check out the middle portion of its page where it says right there, clear as day, forecasted wait times. Now keep in mind, these aren't gonna be the exact calculations for when a ride's wait times will dip and peak, but they could give you a sense of when or if a ride's wait times will drop off later on in the day. This is all based on lots and lots of data that Disney has collected. Also, don't forget to frequently look at those average wait times for the rides leading up to your vacation. This can help you get a sense of just how long you may have to wait for your favorite attractions and figure out when to prioritize them during your day. Now let's talk about Disney Springs and the horrible, horrible, shocking surprise it can be when you realize exactly how much traffic there is to get there. Disney Springs may not be a park, but that does not mean it doesn't get packed out like the parks do. Disney Springs in the evenings, especially on the weekends, becomes the place to be for guests and locals alike. Even if you're just driving over from Disney's Art of Animation Resort, you're gonna need to factor in how incredibly heavy that traffic can potentially be. So factor in at least an extra hour for travel alone to make it over to Disney Springs on time. Even if you get there earlier than your dining reservation, you're still gonna have plenty to do to kill time. This is a shopping district after all. But Bria and I have both had situations where we have been 30 minutes to an hour late for a dining reservation. One of our editors and project managers, Lee, has been extremely late for reservations in Disney Springs because nobody ever thinks there's gonna be that much traffic, but there is. It is a nightmare. Plan ahead if you're going on Friday or Saturday or even Sunday sometimes. Now, even though I'm here right now telling you to give yourself plenty of extra time to make it to Disney Springs, that doesn't mean that you're always going to do that, right? Because sometimes we don't follow our own advice. Or maybe you just don't gauge the time of those rides and how long they can take. So Bria's got a story for you. This past weekend, she was riding over to Disney Springs from Disney's Animal Kingdom to make it to their Edison Reservation. And they wanted to get one last minute ride on Kilimanjaro Safaris. And she says she'd do it again if she had to. Now the problem was that Kilimanjaro Safaris isn't a short ride and it ended up eating into a lot of their travel time. So they found themselves stuck in the worst side of Orlando traffic with only minutes until their reservation time. 
They called up the Edison, and after a few rings, a host picked up, and they explained the situation. Fortunately, they told Bria they could hold the reservation and wouldn't cancel it flat out. So when they arrived an hour later, seriously, don't do this, they checked in at the Edison and they still had their reservation. Though they weren't seated right away and still had to wait about 10 to 15 minutes, they were still better off than those joining the walk-up wait list, which had reached an hour and a half wait. So moral of the story, A, give yourself plenty of travel time to get to Disney Springs. And if you do get stuck in traffic, call the restaurant, see if they can hold your reservation while you weave your way around that awful Orlando traffic. All right, so having a good park bag in Disney is pretty essential. Now you may want a bag that's aesthetically pleasing, but if you just pick up any old backpack without a second thought, you might accidentally choose one that cuts into your shoulders all day or absolutely kills your spine. So you need to choose wisely. It's kind of like wearing shoes in Disney World. You don't want to make a flippant choice. So consider what you're going to be bringing to the parks each day. If you like to be as prepared as possible, or maybe you're planning on purchasing a few items that you know you won't want to take back to the hotel room immediately after, then having a bigger yet still comfortable backpack can help you proudly take on the role of family camel. The Mickey Mouse Travel Backpack from Shop Disney is not only comfy and cute, but has tons of pockets to compartmentalize all your package snacks. And this vintage laptop backpack doesn't have to be used to lug around your computer. It doubles as a good park bag too with a built-in USB charging port. Just keep in mind, the average empty backpack weighs between one and six pounds. So once you add your essentials, the final weight needs to be something you're gonna be comfortable carrying around for 10 plus hours day after day. For those who only wanna carry around the absolute minimum, there's no sense in bringing a giant bag with a ton of space you won't use. So stick with sling bags or fanny packs or those teeny tiny lounge fly bags. Me personally, I like having pockets in my pants so that I can put everything in my pockets and I don't even have to bring a bag into Disney World. But that's not always possible, so I make sure to do a few trial runs, maybe some hiking with the backpacks that I'm considering to make sure that they're not gonna make me miserable when I'm in the parks. Now, even if you're not willing to join the Park Pass Reservation Fan Club anytime soon, this reservation system is still gonna be your key to getting into all the Disney parks after you buy a park ticket. That is, except in very specific cases when you don't need them at all. So here are the four instances when you're not gonna need a Park Pass reservation. First, under Disney's updated ticketing system, one day, one park tickets are now park specific. When you buy these tickets, the park you select will automatically come with a park pass because they won't let you buy a ticket to a park that's filled up. Two, Disney will soon be allowing annual pass holders to enter the Disney World theme parks after 2 p.m. without a park pass reservation. But there is one important exception. APs will still need park passes to visit Magic Kingdom on Saturdays and Sundays. Three, if you buy a ticket for a separate event, like for an after hours event or a Magic Kingdom holiday party, then you do not need a park pass to attend said event. Just note that the parties do specify when you can start arriving in the park. For example, with After Hours at Magic Kingdom, you can enter the park as early as 7 p.m. using the event ticket only, with no park pass necessary. Want to enter Magic Kingdom earlier than 7 p.m. on the same date? Then you're still going to need a valid regular park ticket and a park pass reservation. And four, while you will need a park pass for the first park you wanna visit each day, if you have a park hopper add-on, then you do not need a park pass for the second, third, fourth, etc. park you want to jump over to. Don't wanna carry that weighted stitch plush around all day long? I don't blame you, that thing's heavy. So it's time to rent a theme park locker. Locker rentals are available at the front of all four parks and the water parks too. You can rent one through the self-service kiosk inside the locker's location, or if you're planning on paying via Magic Band, just head over to the nearest gift shop for cast member assistance. Small lockers cost $10 per day, large lockers cost 12, except at the water parks where they're gonna cost you 15. And jumbo lockers, which are only available at Magic Kingdom and Epcot, will cost $15 per day as well. If you're using a park hopper, keep in mind that lockers do not transfer from one park to the next like ECVs and stroller rentals do. So once you're done with one park locker, you'll have to rent a completely new park locker to store your stuff at the next location. Now, if you're planning on getting in the virtual queue for Tron Light Cycle Run when it opens on April 4th, then you're gonna have to be quick about it. The virtual queues normally drop twice daily, once at 7 a.m., once at 1 p.m., which we're assuming will be the case with Tron 2. But both of these times have been known to book up within seconds, which we saw with Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot and Rise of the Resistance in Hollywood Studios. But there's another super sneaky third drop that could happen too, but I'll get more into that later on. To make things go more quickly when the virtual queue opens, because with these in-demand attractions, speed is gonna be your BFF. 
You can confirm your party in advance up to an hour before you try to score a space in a boarding group on the My Disney Experience app. Beginning at 6 a.m., you can tap into the virtual queue and set your party so that you have fewer steps when boarding groups become available. On the app, under Join Virtual Queue, you'll find a button that says Confirm Your Party. Once you hit that button, the app will find the people who are linked to your account. You'll select each person that you want to add to your group and choose again to confirm party. And voila! Now you have one less step to worry about when the virtual queue goes live. Good luck! So everything is not as it seems, not even at the Disney restaurants. Though we do love the items that we can physically see on the Disney menus, the ones that are unseen can be just as much fun to uncover and taste test. In the past, we've found secret menu items like the strawberry soup at the Grand Floridian Cafe, the Pau de Queijo Brazilian cheese bread at Skipper Canteen, the Heart of Polynesia cocktail made with Caruba, Bacardi, Blue Curacao, of course, Creme de Banana, Orange and Pineapple over at Trader Sam's Crog Grotto, and that's only the tip of the secrets iceberg, my friends. There are so many more for you to possibly unearth during your visit. We even have an entire DFB video showcasing our 50 favorite secret eats, treats, and drinks that we've recently discovered, some of which DFB actually helped invent. But just remember, secret menu items rotate out frequently, so what's available on one trip may not be available during the next go-round. Make sure you ask a cast member if there are any secret menu items for you to try. So the My Disney Experience app is a lifesaver in a lot of ways, but who knew it could be so useful when it comes to um, emergencies? You can filter the My Disney Experience map by characters, photo pass, or even restrooms by tapping that center arrow toward the top of the screen and selecting a category from the drop-down menu. When you find the restrooms option, tap on it and the map will tell you where you need to go, literally. Okay, for the record, no, nobody stole your stroller, but that doesn't mean it's still gonna be in the exact same location that you parked it in before you went into one of the restaurants or shows or ride queues. Sometimes cast members have to move strollers to a different nearby location due to operational needs. They're not gonna move it far away or anything, but they're gonna move it to make sure it's out of the way and safely parked elsewhere. If you're worried about not being able to track down your stroller in a sea of other strollers, make sure to deck yours out with easy to spot additions. You can tie a Disney balloon around the handle, wrap the sides with tinsel, pick a bright fabric color that's easy to see, something identifiable that makes your wheels easy to spot amongst hundreds of other surrounding strollers. Now, if you or someone in your group is differently mobile, then you're not gonna wanna skip this point. Disney offers guests a few different rental options for getting around the parks, including strollers, wheelchairs, and electric conveyance vehicles, or ECVs. But recently, ECVs have been selling out earlier on in the day, with it happening most frequently at Magic Kingdom. If you get to one of the parks and ECVs happen to already be all bought up when you arrive, you'll have to be placed on a walk-up wait list. Wait times for getting an ECV after you've been placed on the wait list will vary. Sometimes you have to wait 20 minutes, sometimes you might have to wait a couple of hours. There's just no way of telling, and it all depends on how many other people are ahead of you on the wait list and when other guests decide to return their ECV rentals before they leave the park. And that's why getting to the parks early can put you at a major advantage. If you're a Disney Resort guest and you use your early theme park entry to get into the parks 30 minutes before they open for everyone else, then you'll have first dibs on the ECVs. But if you absolutely need an ECV for your trip and you don't want to risk the gamble either way, and maybe you want to sleep in once in a while, you're safer renting from an outside company than you are banking on finding one available in the park. Many outside companies will deliver your ECV straight to your hotel so that you don't have to worry about transporting it yourself. We highly recommend Buena Vista Scooters. They are a fantastic company. They're great guys who run it. So that's where we would point you in that direction. So sometimes certain rides do not want to get up and around in the morning, especially rides like Hollywood Studios Tower of Terror, which has had kind of a rough go lately with some of its elevator shafts. But if you see any ride down at the beginning of your day, don't automatically assume it's going to be down all day long. Some rides just need a minute to warm up in the morning and they can't rely on a cup of coffee to jolt them awake, poor things. Keep your eye on the My Disney Experience app and hit up some other nearby rides while you wait for the sleepy one to fully wake up. Now, of course, it's not sleeping. Something's gone wrong, and there's a reason why it's not running. That way, when the ride does go back online, you can make a beeline to that attraction before everyone else figures out it's back and in business. But don't panic. Most rides will come back up if they go down for a little while during the day, and you can always ask a cast member who might be able to let you know what the time frame might be. So Disney World's a pretty happy-go-lucky place most of the time, but it can also be stressful. 
If you're a naturally anxious person like me, or find certain things like crowded areas or loud spaces to be particularly nerve wracking, then you're gonna want to avoid dining at some of the Disney World restaurants. Chef Mickey's at Disney's Contemporary Resort can be extremely loud with dance parties, blaring music, squealing kids. Not only that, because this spot is also switching back into buffet mode, there's also that extra layer of anxiety that comes with piling your plates with food and making it back to your table in time to not miss out on one of the characters passing by, because if you miss him, you may not see him again. Of course, you can ask a cast member to have them come back, but it is a little bit stressful, especially if you're already an anxious person. 50's Primetime Cafe at Disney's Hollywood Studios is another one that you might want to skip out on if you're anxious. If having someone scold you, even when it's all in good fun, sounds like an absolute nightmare to you, then steer clear of this spot. The whole theme behind it is that you've stepped into mom's kitchen back in the 50s, and your cousins, uncles, and family members, aka your servers, are not afraid to chastise you the way true family members do. That means you might get yelled at for putting your elbows on the table or continuously reminded to eat all your veggies if you want dessert, or they may even try to set you up with someone across the room. You never know. We may or may not have witnessed a child asked to stand up and sing I'm a little teapot, and frankly, we've seen adults asked to stand up and sing I'm a little teapot. It's a wild place. It's a lot of fun if you're into that public ridicule stuff. Again, it's all in good fun. That being said, if you're still interested in watching the shenanigans unfold without directly being a part of them, you can always let your host know at the beginning of your meal that you'd rather sit back and observe rather than be actively involved. Now, another place that you can see this happen is Whispering Canyon Cafe. They're supposed to sort of mess with the patrons in a fun and funny way, but if you don't want to be part of the hijinks, just say you'd rather watch. Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe in Magic Kingdom is a fast food location that features indoor and outdoor seating, with the highlight being that melodious space alien sunny eclipse. Now, we love the ample amounts of seating in this restaurant. More tables does lead to lots of guests crowding this area, though, especially around peak lunch times. Our advice, go here after lunch and before dinner to hit its non-busy sweet spot. Then you can grab a table with an epic view of Cinderella Castle, and that's way more peaceful. Now, this next tip you've probably heard before. I'm going to be honest about it. But this time of year, it is critical. While Florida is called the Sunshine State, if you're planning on traveling to Orlando during the beginning of the year, you might still be greeted with a cold snap. Last time Bria visited Epcot, the wind chill was brutal. She started off the day in shorts and a t-shirt, but by lunch, she swapped into jeans and a sweater and felt so much warmer afterwards. So always pack layers if you know you're going to Disney around a time of year when the temps can still get frigid. Even if you see the extended forecast telling you Orlando will be around the mid to lower 60s during your visit, Still pack those layers, because as the locals will tell you, the 60 degrees and below in Florida still has that humidity-enhanced bite. Now, for once, I'm telling you that you may be better off without reservations for a popular Disney experience. Never thought this day would come now, did ya? Over at the Lego store in Disney Springs, there's an extremely popular create your own minifigure experience where you can completely customize your own Lego person on these minifigure factory tablets. It's a ton of fun and only $12 to do, but because it's so popular, the virtual lines for this experience get real long. Here's the thing, getting in a virtual line for this Lego experience may still be better than booking a reservation for this place before your trip. One of the Lego cast members recently informed us that the minifigure factory was completely booked through March. However, even if all the online bookings on the Lego website have been filled, you can still add yourself to the walk-up waitlist the day of your visit. Just head into the store, sign up over at the Create Your Own Experience station toward the back of the building, and then you'll receive a text when it's your turn to build a figure. The last time we did this, our projected wait was 80 minutes, but after an hour of exploring some of the nearby shops in the marketplace area, we got our text saying to come back and let the building fun begin 30 minutes earlier than originally projected. So might not make sense to make an online reservation for this one if it's already booked up and you can just join the virtual queue. Will it always work? No, but something to keep in mind. Now you may have one final chance of getting into Tron's virtual queue. If you're staying at a deluxe resort and using those extended evening hours, then there's the possibility the virtual queue will open up for you again at 6 p.m. We've seen this happen with the virtual queue over at Cosmic Rewind on the days that Epcot has their extended evening hours available. So we're assuming a similar case is gonna happen for Magic Kingdom too. Magic Kingdom's extended evening hours aren't always available, but when they do happen, they usually happen on a Tuesday or Wednesday. So if you want to make sure your deluxe resort visit falls during the time these benefits are taking place, check the Disney World Parks calendar online before you book your trip. 
Shout out to all you goofy movie fans and Incredibles fans out there. I've got a tip just for you. You might have the chance to meet Max Goof in his Powerline costume over in Disney's Hollywood Studios during your next visit. Most recently, we've seen a meeting and greeting with guests on Grand Avenue near the Galaxy's Edge entrance. The Pixar Incredibles fam has also been out and about, lined up in several areas around the perimeter of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We've been able to see Frozone, Edna Mode, and Mr. and Mrs. Incredible, and they're all looking just as fabulous as ever. These sightings don't happen all the time, but when they do, these are the areas you'll need to watch out for, just in case Max and the merry band of supers decide to come out and say hello. And if you want to hear about more new characters that we find during our park day just as soon as they happen to pop up on the scene, make sure to join our DFB newsletter to stay in the loop. Bonus, if you drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash 50 best tips to receive a free digital copy of today's list, we're going to automatically sign you up for that free newsletter as well, which you can unsubscribe from at any time. So you should know when not to buy Genie Plus. That's what this tip is all about. Disney Genie Plus can be very useful, especially when it comes to its extensive list of lightning lane options, which will help you bypass the main queues for over 40 different rides and attractions in each of the four parks. But sometimes paying for this premium planning tool can be less helpful and more of an unnecessary extra cost. That's why we're here. There are two parks you really don't have to worry about getting Genie Plus for, and that's Epcot and Animal Kingdom. Epcot does have some rides that build up pretty hefty lines like Remy's Ratatouille Adventure and Frozen Ever After, but if you make the most out of your early theme park entry benefit, which allows Disney Resort guests to enter the parks 30 minutes early, or if you hit up some of these popular rides toward the end of the night when the crowds start to die down, then, hypothetically speaking, you should still be able to manage all the rides you want to experience in a single day without Genie+. Plus. As far as Animal Kingdom is concerned, there really aren't enough rides listed on the Lightning Lane options for Genie Plus to be worth your time and money. And that's because there aren't a lot of rides in the park in the first place. The great thing about both Epcot and Animal Kingdom is that you don't have to fill your day with back-to-back -back rides to still have a fun and full day. At Epcot, you can meander through the World Showcase, taste test festival foods, watch outdoor performances, say hi to the sea urchins at Sea Base, you know, the important stuff. And at Animal Kingdom, you've got several animal-lined walking trails, live performances, and so many different cultural snacks to try. And you can buy Genie Plus if you really want to, but you can also save your money and still have a good time at either of these parks. So here's what I want you to do. Check out the ticket costs for the days you're going to be in these parks. If the ticket costs are skyrocketing or the Genie Plus prices are skyrocketing, chances are it's going to be crowded in those two parks and you may not want to fight the good fight. Go ahead and buy Genie Plus. But if the cost is low and the ticket prices are relatively low, that means they're not expecting too many folks in those parks that day. And if you're willing to wait 30 or 45 minutes for a ride, you shouldn't have a problem riding everything you want to ride all in the same day. So we mentioned Tron a couple times here. Let's talk about the biggest question people have about Tron. This ride is gonna have you boarding your very own light cycle and speeding your way through a digital realm. But because you're essentially gonna have to ride this coaster like you would a bike, the seats may not be the comfiest or most accommodating for some riders. If you wanna test out the light cycles before you blast your way across the grid while simultaneously rocking out to an epic Daft Punk score, there are tester seats stationed off to the left of the queue entrance where you can try them on for size. To fully test out the light cycle, make sure you pull down on the handles to engage the leg and back restraints. This will give you a good idea of how the light cycle ride vehicles actually feel. If that test vehicle feels fine, you should be good to go. And if it doesn't, there are adaptive cars on the back of some of the trains, which offer standard coaster seating, so like what you'd expect on Expedition Everest over in Animal Kingdom. If you need to use the adaptive seating, just let a cast member know once you reach the boarding area and they'll pull you aside to wait for the next available adaptive train seats. Now, something to note, a lot of folks are using these tester vehicles as photo ops, so you may have to wait in a bit of a line to test out the vehicle yourself. Hopefully you already have the My Disney Experience app downloaded on your phone. If you don't, do that. We'll wait. Okay. But Disney has another free app that you can download to help enhance your park experience called the Play Disney Parks app. The Play Disney Parks app is full of games and interactive experiences to not only keep everyone busy while you're waiting in lines, but also help add a whole other layer of immersion to your park experience. 
At Disney's Hollywood Studios, you can use the Play Disney Parks app in Galaxy's Edge to access your data pad, where you'll be able to hack into droids, scan crates to collect cargo, translate the Arabash language, and tune into satellite transmissions to eavesdrop on residents, and maybe even learn a secret or two. And over in Epcot, the Play Disney Parks app is how you're going to experience the DuckTales World Showcase adventure. We got to try this out recently, and it was an absolute blast. There are seven different missions you can embark upon with Huey, Dewey, Louie, Webby, and the rest of the adventurers as you take down bad guys, decode hidden messages, and trigger special events that activate around parts of the pavilion that you might not have paid much attention to otherwise. Not going to give anything away, but one of the most fun parts about this experience is triggering an event and watching other people who have no idea what's going on stop, stare, and ask, how on earth did you do that? By the way, parents, caretakers, if you are in Epcot and you'd like to taste around the festivals, this is a great way to keep your kids busy and entertained while you're eating your way around the booths. Next, I'm gonna tell you how to get first dibs on individual lightning lanes. The more popular and newest Disney World rides like Tron and Rise of the Resistance aren't gonna have lightning lanes available in the Disney Genie Plus lineup. So even if you buy Disney Genie Plus, you can't get a lightning lane for those rides. Instead, you'll have to pay for them separately. Pay per ride, per person. But because these rides are so popular, even those individual lightning lanes have the tendency to sell out. If you wanna make sure you don't miss your window of opportunity to pay your way around those ginormous queues for your most anticipated rides, then you're gonna need to stay at a Disney-owned resort to call first dibs. While non-resort guests have to wait to purchase individual lightning lanes once the parks open up, Disney resort guests can start purchasing individual lightning lanes at 7 a.m. And believe me, if you're wanting to get a Tron lightning lane to skip over the virtual queue completely, you're gonna need that 7 a.m. drop. More than likely, individual lightning lanes for Tron will be totally bought up once Magic Kingdom opens its gates. All right, it's time to know which restaurant's gonna give you the best bang for your buck. We're gonna cut to the chase. Which Disney restaurants serve up super high quality food while also giving you the most out of your overall experience? We've got a few lined up for you to keep in mind. First, Sanaa at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is located on the resort Sunset Savannah, where you'll get to see zebras, giraffes, gazelles, and several other creatures that you're so not gonna see out the window of your local mom and pop diner back home, unless you live in Africa. What makes this restaurant such an amazing deal is that you get the safari animal experience without having to pay for admission to Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's like having lunch and a show. Now, Garden Grill at Epcot, that's a family-style character dining experience where you get to meet fan favorites like Chip and Dale, Pluto, and Farmer Mickey. The overalls and plaid suit him, right? Now, because of the circular shape of this restaurant, characters are able to come around to visit your table not just once, but multiple times during a single meal. It's a small restaurant. There aren't as many people here as there are at Chef Mickey's, so you're going to get to see these characters a lot. Not to mention the restaurant slowly rotates, so you'll get to see several of the different scenes from the best ride in Epcot, Living with the Land, going on down below. And Steakhouse 71 at Disney's Contemporary Resort is surprisingly affordable for a sit-down Disney World restaurant that has amazing food. Entrees here cost between $16 and $26, and although dinner is a bit more expensive, the steakhouse cuts are still cheaper than most other steakhouses in Disney World. For example, a six ounce filet mignon at Steakhouse 71 is 38 bucks. Well, the same thing's gonna cost you 62 at La Cellier in Epcot. Plus, don't forget to get that amazing, amazing cheeseburger. I know, you wouldn't think a cheeseburger in Disney World would be much to talk about, but believe me, it is. I often talk about how tedious it can be to drive to the Magic Kingdom simply because you have to park over by the transportation and ticket center, and then you have to take a monorail or ferry just to get to the front gate of the park. And that extra transportation time really does eat into your day. But depending on where you have to park, you may have to factor in another mode of transportation just to get to the transportation and ticket center, and that's the trams. If you're parked out far enough, you may not want to walk all the way over to the transportation and ticket center. And if that's the case, then you're not just going to have to wait to get on a monorail or a ferry, but you're also going to have to wait to get on a tram first. Basically, driving to the Magic Kingdom is not as easy as the other parks, where you can just park and waltz right on up to the main gate. So when you're trying to make it over to Rope Drop or Magic Kingdom Dining Reservation, and you're taking your own vehicle instead of a Disney bus, factor in those extra transportation methods that you're gonna need to take on top of the time it'll take you to drive to the park. Meaning, head out early, give yourself plenty of time. It's time to wear a really awesome Disney shirt you can be proud of. Finding a Disney shirt is easy, but finding a Disney shirt that's unique, comfy, stylish, and customized is more of a rarity unless you head over to dfbstore.com right now and check out what we've got in stock. 
All of our Disney swag comes in a variety of sizes, styles, and colors so you can get exactly the design you're looking for, for you or your whole family. We even have new crop tops for those sweltering Orlando days. So whether this is your first Disney trip or hundredth, we've got the design perfect for you. But maybe I'm just biased? Nah, these shirts are awesome. And by the way, by supporting us over at dfbstore.com by buying our books or our shirts, that means you're supporting your favorite YouTube channel. That's us, right? Time to talk about using Genie Plus for more than just rides. The biggest reason you purchase Disney Genie Plus on the day of your visit is for that lightning lane ride access, right? But there's a lot more to the premium feature on top of being able to bypass those giant ride lines. For starters, you not only have the option to bypass the main queues for the rides, but for some attractions as well. In Magic Kingdom, you can get lightning lanes for reserved viewing at the Festival of Fantasy Parade, and in each of the parks, you can get lightning lanes for some of the main character meet and greet locations. You can also get lightning lanes for several of the shows, though you're really not gonna need them, but hey, they're available regardless. And Disney Genie Plus also has those extra features like augmented reality photo lenses you can use around the parks. I think your preteens are really gonna like those. And you also have access to audio experiences featuring Disney Imagineers and special guests. These are self-guided virtual tours that share fun facts about the attractions and other park areas that you'll wander into during your visit. But hold up, there's one last Genie Plus edition coming to a My Disney Experience app near you very soon. At the beginning of this year, Disney announced that starting in the next few months, guests who purchase Disney Genie Plus in Disney World will get free digital PhotoPass downloads for attraction photos taken on the day of their purchase. We'll be sure to let you know when this new edition officially kicks off because you're so going to want to take advantage of that. And yes, I do need another picture of my face concentrating super hard on Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. No further questions, please. If there's a certain ride seat you're really wanting but you don't want to leave it up to chance, you might be able to request said ride seat so you don't have to just cross your fingers and hope for the best. For example, Soarin' Around the World in Epcot has a ton of different seats and rows and sections, but... We all know that the best place to sit on Soren, so we don't have feet obstructing our view and a totally skewed picture on the screen is top row toward the center. You can tell a cast member your row preference when it's time for them to start assigning rows to the next groups. And does this mean you'll have to wait for the next flight before you get on? Maybe, but that could be well worth the extra wait since a cast member is probably going to be able to accommodate your request. Same goes with Cosmic Rewind. If you have a preference for this coaster, whether it be sitting at the back, the front, or middle of the train, I always choose middle because I get sick in the front or in the back, just let a cast member know before you board. They'll take you over to a holding area where, again, you can wait until the next vehicle pulls up. Once it's your turn, a cast member will direct you toward your requested seat. Done. Can they always accommodate requests? No. If things are wild and chaotic and there's like a jillion people and everybody's requesting a seat, just let that cast member breathe and sit where they put you. But if things are pretty light and you ask politely and kindly, then you may get your request. So there's a new magical interactive smart speaker coming to the Disney hotels and it's called Hey Disney. Hey Disney works a lot like your A-L-E-X-A or Amazon Echo. Once you said the magic words, Hey Disney, the device will come to life and be able to answer your questions or fulfill certain requests like asking for extra pillows, or letting you know what time Epcot opens that day, plus a ton of other stuff. But before you can start talking to your Hey Disney advice, you've got to know how to turn it on. The top of the device will have a button that looks like a red crossed out circle. Upon arrival, the device will be muted, so you'll need to press that circular button to unmute it and use the smart speaker. And if you don't want to use technology that talks back to you in your room because it kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies, then don't worry about pressing that red button at all. If you leave it alone, the device will stay quiet throughout your stay. Currently, Hey Disney devices are being tested in a few of the rooms at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, but they should be popping up in all the rooms across Disney property later on this year. We actually stayed in one of these beta Hey Disney rooms not too terribly long ago, so if you want to see what our first reactions were to this new system, then make sure to check out our Hey Disney post. I'll link it down below for you. Now, I just got an email recently from someone who's headed to Magic Kingdom for the first time in years, and they want to know where to stand to watch the fireworks. So let's talk about that. Now, Happily Ever After is coming back as Magic Kingdom's nighttime spectacular on April 3rd, and we can't wait. But before we get to hear this classic song alongside a brand new castle projection show, we gotta know where to stake our claim to get the very best views. If you're willing to hold down a spot in front of Cinderella Castle 60 to 90 minutes before the spectacular starts, then you can be the proud owner of a prime section of real estate. If you're with a group, you can always kill time by taking turns grabbing snacks and having a few bathroom breaks leading up to the show. 
Just keep in mind that you may not have the greatest view of the fireworks from this vantage point and you won't be able to see Main Street, USA. Also, somebody will probably just come and stand right in front of you five minutes before the show. But at least you'll be up close and personal with the new castle display. If you back up a few paces near the partner statue, you'll have a better view of the entire sky above and behind Cinderella Castle. This is another spot that may require significant time invested, like an hour or two hours of saving your spot, at least for those first couple weeks. You can also stake out a spot in the middle of Main Street, USA, where you'll be able to enjoy all the projections and the fireworks above the castle. We suggest getting here at least 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time, but the further down Main Street you choose to park yourselves, the less time you'll need to spend waiting before the start of the show. Now, how many people will really spend an hour to two hours holding their spot for the fireworks? Hopefully not too many, because like I said, some Joe Schmo is going to come stand in front of you anyway and put his kid up on his shoulders. And that two hours you spent waiting is going to be for naught, and you'll be very, very upset and not enjoy the fireworks at all. So it may make more sense to come out about 30 minutes before and just see what spots left are available. Get a couple extra rides in, take your knocks as they come, you're still going to see the fireworks. Just saying. It is time to talk about avoiding riding Disney transportation at the worst times. Look, I love Disney transportation as much as the next Disney transportation fan, but there are some times when our visits on said transportation services are just timed just wrong, and we want you to avoid making these mistakes. Take the Magic Kingdom boats, for example, which make their way across the Seven Seas Lagoon and over to hotels like Polynesian Village Resort, Grand Floridian, Wilderness Lodge, Fort Wilderness, Contemporary. If you're trying to get back to your hotel room at night via boat ride, but you just so happen to be making your way across the lagoon when the electrical water pageant is taking place, which runs between 8.25 to 10.30 p.m. nightly, then you could very well get caught by the parade route and have to wait for the surrounding waters to clear out again. It's just not safe for you guys to be boating across across the lake when there's a giant parade. One of our reporters recently got stuck on a Disney boat for an hour while the pageant was going on, which was a lot of time to be stuck out at sea after a full park day, but I don't need to tell you that. You may want to stick with an alternative mode of transportation during this time instead, or maybe even splurge a little for a minivan if you're wanting to make a quick getaway back to your room. And that's not the only Magic Kingdom area parade that could interrupt your Disney transportation ride. We've also gotten ourselves stuck on the Walt Disney World Railroad, during the Festival of Fantasy Parade, the train has to stop at Main Street USA to let the parade floats cross through into the backstage area over there in Frontierland. Though we were only stopped for 15 minutes as opposed to an hour in a boat, that's still a good chunk of time just to be sitting idly in a train. The Festival of Fantasy Parade happens around noon and 3 p.m. daily, so try to avoid any railroad joy rides during that time unless you want to potentially catch the tail end of the parade from your train car. Now this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tips. So if you're still here watching this video, definitely listen to this one. If you see a taped off box on the ground while you're strolling around the parks, step in it. Trust me on this. These are cast member applause boxes, which tend to appear when an attraction in the area is down or if the parks just aren't as busy that particular day or maybe if they're too busy. When you step inside one, nearby cast members will burst into a round of unearned applause. And then when you step out of it, the applause will cease. See, not much to it, but it is a fun way for guests and cast members to interact with one another. Plus, who doesn't love a good round of spontaneous applause just for being there? It really does make you feel good. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> Okay, time to change up your Genie Plus selection. Whenever changes are announced for the Disney Genie Plus planning tool, which is all the time, we usually find ourselves holding our breath, wondering what new hoops we're going to have to jump through this time. But the change that happened to this feature back in late 2022 actually did a whole lot of good. Instead of having to flat out cancel Lightning Lane selections when you decide you want to switch one out for another, potentially losing everything in the fallout, you can now simply modify your selection instead. This is crucial if you're wanting to snag as many lightning lanes as you can in a single day. There's a whole lot to this little trick that you can learn all about on our Outsmarting Genie Plus video that's now live on our YouTube channel. But in short, being able to modify your reservations comes in handy when you're relying on the 120 minute rule. The 120 minute rule allows you to make another lightning lane reservation even if you haven't been able to use your previous one just yet. You just have to wait for that two hour cooldown period before you can jump back on and pick another ride. Before, when you canceled a lightning lane in order to choose one you liked better, the app would reset your 120 minute countdown. But now that you have the modified lightning lane option, you can change up your lightning lane without your 120 minute countdown starting over on you. It's a great deal. So we talked about requesting a seat on a ride. How about requesting a hotel room? 
The cool thing about Disney World resorts, most of them are huge with a lot of different amenities and recreational offerings for you to take advantage of. But the not so cool thing about them, um, most of them are huge, which makes getting around more of a challenge. Some resorts are so big that they have their own internal bus transportation, like Caribbean Beach Resort. When you've just spent 10 plus hours in the parks and you're desperately wanting to get back to your bed before you bite someone's head off, the last thing you want to do is wait for a bus to get from the park to your hotel, only have to wait even longer while the bus makes its rounds around the resort. Other hotels, like the Polynesian Village, have a separate lobby that's detached from the buildings housing the actual rooms, so you may have to trek a good long way just to make it over to the main hotel area. I've had to run through many a thunderstorm to get back to my room in resorts like this that have the guest rooms in buildings detached from the lobby. So this is why putting in room requests can be crucial to your stay. During check-in, make sure to put in a request for a room close to the amenities you want to have nearby, like quick and easy access to the lobby, being close to the Skyliner, maybe close to an elevator. Disney won't always be able to fulfill their requests, but if they can, they will, so it never hurts to ask. If you want to make a room request online, go to the My Reservations and Tickets section under the My Disney Experience tab. Next to your reservation, you'll see an option that says Update Check-In. Click on this link to open a new page of suggestions, then select the Show Details link. This is going to add even more suggestions for your updated check-in, including specific room requests. And if your specific room request isn't listed, you can go ahead and call the hotel. Let them know what day you're coming in and they should be able to add your request to your reservation. And you may already be familiar with mobile ordering quick service meals on your My Disney Experience app, but did you know some table service restaurants have mobile order capabilities too? Some restaurants around the Disney World hotels have food for pickup, meaning guests order their food, grab it, and carry it over to another area of the resort to eat, maybe even picnic style or back in the comfort of your room. Mobile order options can be found at table service locations like Sanaa and Animal Kingdom Lodge, Steakhouse 71 at Contemporary, Three Bridges Bar and Grill at Coronado Springs, and lots of other places that I can highly recommend stopping to dine. To order table service food to go, you'll follow similar steps that you would when placing a mobile order for a quick service. First, you select an arrival window, then you build and place your order. Next, you arrive at the restaurant when the app sends a notification that your order's ready, and finally, you eat. Keep in mind that because you are still ordering from a table service and not a quick service, that the time it takes to prepare your food isn't as fast. When you use the to-go feature for these types of meals, you're still going to wind up waiting a similar amount of time for it to be prepared as you would if you were sitting in the restaurant, whether you're dining in or carrying out. So don't use this service if you're just looking for another speedy meal. But this is great if it's the end of the day and you have kids who are sleeping or need to get to sleep. And maybe mom and dad are starving and they don't want to just eat some cheese from the mini fridge and the bathtub. Of course, I've never done that before. I don't know why you would say that but this can be a lifesaver. That's all I'm gonna say. We are all about letting technology do the work for us. And that goes for when we lose our car in one of the Disney World parking lots, because why play Marco Polo with your minivan's alarm when you can just have the My Disney Experience app track it down for you? We've all done it. The My Disney Experience app now has a car locator feature, which you can find when you tap on the hamburger, AKA the three horizontal lines button and scroll down to the bottom of your list of options. When you park your car in one of the Disney theme park lots, press the Save Vehicle Location button or manually enter the car's location yourself. This will allow the app to use your current location to get information about your car's whereabouts. When it's time to find your car at the end of the day, just open the app back up, choose the car locator feature, and bam, there's your car's saved location. So that's super simple. Can you also just take a picture of where your car is? Yes. <laughs> this is just a fancier way to do it. Now this next tip is super, super valuable, especially on those crowded days. So Fantasmic is Hollywood Studios' big nighttime spectacular, full of music, water, and pyrotechnics, larger than life animatronics, live actors, light projections, you know, the works. Fantasmic's showtimes always happen in the evenings, but how often it decides to play really depends on when you're visiting. Sometimes during Disney's slower seasons, it'll only have one showtime per night, and during the busier seasons, it'll have two. If you happen to be at Hollywood Studios on a night when Fantasmic has their double showing, aim to go to the second spectacular instead of the first. Lots of folks choose to go to the first showing because they're getting tired and ready to head back to the hotel or get the kids to bed or they don't even know there's a second showing. And that means the second showtime is usually a whole lot less crowded, giving you more seating choices and a greater chance at a better, less packed out view. 
Plus, you can hit up some of those harder to ride rides during the first showing when everybody's over there and not in line. Now listen, Bria wants you to know about this tip because she says it saved her life. On her last trip to Disney, she made the mistake of wearing brand new socks, the no-show kind. That was the first mistake. As she was walking, she kept feeling her sock slip down into her shoe, and each time she pulled it up, it'd slide back down her heel a few steps later. But lo and behold, she took some of our advice and kept a couple extra pairs of different socks and higher socks in her park bag. So the next chance she got, she set herself down, switched socks, and the heavens opened up to smile down on her. All of this to say, bring extra socks, because you never know when the pair you're wearing will betray you. And now it's time for you to go forth and enjoy your best Disney World trip ever. Remember, if you need to refer back to anything and everything we talked about today, you can email us at disneyfoodblog.com slash 50 best tips, and we're going to send the digital copy of today's list straight to your inbox. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. And thanks for taking this roller coaster ride through our own mistakes. <laughs> As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.